So what happens to the kneecap during a total knee replacement? A really common question that many people have. And in today's video, I'm going to answer all of those questions and more. So stay tuned. Well, hello and welcome back. I'm Adam Rosen and thanks for tuning in. If you have not already, please subscribe and please click the thumbs up like button so people like you can find information like this. Um, so today I'm going to talk about a very common question that I get asked in the office and I've even had a few of you viewers send in this question like what about the kneecap? What happens to the kneecap during a total knee replacement? Well, first of all, I want to take a step back and let's describe the knee. So the knee is really made of three bones. There's the thigh bone or femur, the shin bone or tibia, and the kneecap or patella. And the patella is attached above to the quadriceps tendon and below to the patellar tendon or what was sometimes called the patellar ligament. And it acts as a pulley system. It makes the quadricep muscle effectively stronger because the kneecap pushes it out. And I hate to bring back bad memories if you hated physics in high school, but you know, if you remember physics, it's this vector force and it improves the moment arm of the knee. Now, sometimes we would remove the kneecap. It was more commonly done decades ago, what was called a padelectomy. So for certain injuries or problems, surgeons would just cut the kneecap out. And those people had a little bit more difficulty to do things because they lost some of the strength in the quad mechanism. Now, during knee replacement, and this is the question that I get asked a lot, is what do we do? Do we remove the kneecap? And the answer is no. Um, we basically can do one of two things during a knee replacement. We can resurface it or we can not resurface it. Now, some surgeons choose to not resurface this. And this is more common in some countries um, as opposed to others. In the United States, more frequently doctors resurface it. If you go to places like the UK and Australia, a lot of doctors do not resurface it. So when we do the surgery, if the cartilage looks intact, sometimes surgeons will just leave it in place. Um, there is a fear sometimes that if you re, um, resurface it, and I'll talk about that in a minute, you could make it too thin and cause it to fracture. But if you don't resurface it, one of the more common issues that people have after surgery is anterior knee pain, so pain in the front of the knee, which we can see in a knee replacement where the kneecap is resurfaced. If your kneecap is not resurfaced, most surgeons hear you that you have anterior knee pain, see that your knee was not resurfaced, the kneecap, and offer you a surgery without the guarantee that it's going to fix the problem. So there are some surgeons, me included, that feel that if we don't resurface it, I almost increase the risk of a second surgery if you're one of these people that has anterior knee pain. Now, other reasons um, would be if your kneecap is too thin. So sometimes people have really bad arthritis and they've worn down the kneecap and it's really, really thin and we don't have any room to resurface it. So we leave it in place. Um, now, when we resurface it, there are a lot of different options. Um, there are many, many different plastic buttons that we can basically use to replace the cartilage surface of your kneecap. So the way I describe it to patients is after surgery, if we resurface your kneecap, you touch the kneecap on the outside, it's your bone. If you could flip it upside down before surgery, you would see a cartilage coating and it has a little dome. And if you have arthritis, you've worn down that cartilage on either side or both. And what we do is we resect that dome where the cartilage is, and then we resurface it with one of these plastic buttons. Most commonly, we will cement or glue them. So you can see these three pegs. Once we flatten and resurface the kneecap, if we're resecting, say, 10 millimeters of bone and cartilage, we want to replace that with 10 millimeters of plastic. And we can drill three little pegs, put cement or glue on that surface, and then adhere that plastic button to that surface with the cement while the cement cures. In other instances, we may do what's called a press fit. So we do the same cut. We remove the cartilage and bone to get a flat surface and prepare a hole or multiple holes and then impact that plastic button onto the backside of the kneecap. So now when we flip your kneecap back over and you bend and straighten your new knee replacement knee, your kneecap on the front has a plastic coating on the bottom and that rides in the groove on the top of the thigh bone. That V-shaped groove is what we call the trochlea. So that basically is knee cap replacement in a nutshell. Um, 
I've showed you some of these pictures to get an idea if you're interested. I did make a video a while back. It was sort of flagged by YouTube because it was somewhat graphic, um, but I'll put the link in the show notes. And it's a slideshow of what I do to a kneecap during a total knee replacement, but it's the real live picture. So it shows you the kneecap, the arthritis. It shows you once I've cut it flat. It shows you once I've drilled the holes and put a protective cover to do the rest of the operation. And then it shows a green trial button, which is what we can use to make sure that everything lines up before we open the real deal components. And then it also shows you a picture of what the real component looks like once it's cemented in place. So if you choose to see real live intraoperative pictures, you can go ahead and watch that video. So I hope this has answered the question as to what we do to the kneecap during a total knee replacement surgery. And like always, until next time, stay safe. If you have other questions that you'd like to see videos about in the future, put those in the comments and I will put that on the to-do list. Take care.